Welcome to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Burchell. Follow me at in, on Instagram, www.instagram.com backslash Creative Katie. Share my Instagram channel and my YouTube channel with your crafty friends. Today, I'm going to do a tutorial on stamping, painting, and dressing the Julie Nutting dolls. This was requested by my viewers. Links to supplies used can be found in the description box below. In the video where I created this um, 5x7 magnetic fridge magnet um, inspirational card, I had asked the question about whether people would want a video on how I do the Julie Nutting dolls because they were already colored. Here's another one that I created with another Julie Nutting doll and there is a, a third one that, that I've done. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to do that. So what you need is you need your Julie Nutting dolls or if there's similar other stamps, I guess you can do them in a similar way. I have, you know, five or six of them. And what I've found in the past, I use this Dilutions um, acrylic block because it is long enough. This one, this acrylic block, which is the next largest one, it didn't quite it wasn't quite big enough, but I kind of made do with that. So, um, but I did do the Dilutions one in the past. Now I have actually purchased the J Tim Holtz um, stamping platform and I used it to, to make the dolls that I just showed you. And it just really makes things so much easier. So, um, you know, I am not a stamper. I'm not a card maker by by design. And so when it comes to stamping, I, I struggle a bit. So I could not believe how easy this was to, um, how much easier it made. Now, my Julie Nutting dolls, if you not sure if you can see them in the picture. You can, I stamp them on old dictionary paper. You could put it on book paper, you could put it on music paper. Uh, the music paper I have is, is just way too um, fragile. It wouldn't be able, something that I could um, glue. So with the stamp platform, we're just going to put those on, put the magnets there, and you kind of position it. Now with the dictionary page, there's that space in between. It really doesn't matter because I will be using my gel prints to, um, to, to put the dressing on, the dresses on. So you just kind of go like that. It comes right off and then I'm using archival ink and then you can just go on here. Now with the stamp platform you can go back and stamp again if you don't get a dark enough stamp which I found to be really helpful especially when I do the clothing part. So I can do that. Um, Let's see if one of these girls, this girl will kind of sort of, will she fit here? Whoops. Let's try, I'm gonna put this other skinny one here. So I could have done these at the same time. So you just push them upside down, get it to cling, on and this is on the clear side. There's the word clear right here. Whoops. And I'm just inking it up. Okay. 
and pressing that down. Now that, you know, um, is a little faint right there, which is the joy of this stamping platform. Um, and you can just put ink in the little spot that's, you know, not getting the dark enough edge. So then I can take that off if I want. And when I'm doing this in, you know, I tend to do all the stamping at one time. So I would just leave these stamps on here and re-ink them and stamp again. So that way, you know, I'm a big advocate of having stuff that's stamped or pre-gessoed or something that's in some way shape or form partially done so that when you start to create I find that that works really well with the Julie Nutting dolls you know because already you're doing a background or an art journal page that you're going to put them on if you don't have to um, re-stamp or you know take everything out again I like I like that so another Julie Nutting doll in here and I don't have any of these kind of pre-mades so this one's kind of the princess and you can see it's a huge stamp so this would even be too big for the Dilusions stamp block so with the with the Tim Holtz set up here it is just perfect and I just want to position that in here, so we're going to do a princess gown. Sorry for the construction noises, occupational hazards. So there, so I have a gel print in here and I've taken off one of them because I want different colors. Now I don't need, sometimes they have a headband so you gotta take note of what you want to have with the coordinating gel print. I can make the boots the same color, I can make the dress, I can make the top and the bottom the same color. So I'm just going to stamp the whole. But if I only want it the top, then I would just stamp the top part and, you know, scoo scooch around that. But, you know, for the sake of ease, now that's just not going to fit there. There we go. And here's where I find that it helps being able to have the stamp press and, whoops, now, of course, that's probably going to move now, so I'm not going to restamp that. Again, I'm, you know, but it is dark enough for me to see, and, and this, this is going to be a nice dress that she's going to have. So I'm just going to put this one on, and maybe we'll do it on... this dress this one has a headband so I'm just going to just position this here I'm not going to put ink if you look there the shoes here I'm going to color those paint those in I'm not going to do, piddle around and start cutting that um, so I just want the dress and the headband so I'm only going to put ink on the top part of this so just gonna put that on there and again I could probably learn how to do this more effectively if I went and I watched some videos all the videos that Tim Holtz has put off and stuff so Okay, so I'm thinking that's going to be good enough for me to, to cut. 
and a lot of the time when I'm looking at cutting out the dresses and stuff like a lot of this before I cut it all out um, you know I put, keep it in there and then I cut it out while I'm watching TV but I'm just going to take these actually we're going to before I cut out because it doesn't matter if you do it cut it out first what I'm going to do is show you how I color them so basically all I color on these dolls as they are are the skin and the hair and sometimes the shoes depending so what I like to use I like to use my ink tent blocks I have a couple colors that tend to work quite nicely now if you have the so I like using the white and I like using this it's 1800 it's kind of a fleshy tone color sometimes I might mix more and then I'm going to blend it with a matte medium and that's going to make it permanent so and I just get water on my brush and I just wet this down and then I have the white and if you do this before you cut out you can just you know you can go over the edges you don't have to worry sometimes when I'm doing the finished product I will project I will be shading this so I'm not too worried I'm not trying to put shading in there you can make kind of a puddle on your mat and on that one that's all that needs to be done so you can see this is quite easy and I'm just going to add just a little bit of gel medium or gel mat gel mat liquid that's a good way of making what is not necessarily going to be permanent it fixes it in place it also kind of gives takes away the chalky finish I find the ink tense blocks as much as I love 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 them I find I do find them uh, chalky have they have a chalky finish and if you put the matte medium on it it kind of gets rid of that chalkiness I want a little bit more white so I'm just playing till I get the skin tone that I want you can use kind of orange I've used other colors you know to get a variety of you know even here we have this is lighter than than this one so you just kind of it's trial and error So I'm going to just do this one. I'm going to grab some gesso and use a little bit of gesso. Just clean off the brush here. Let's just put a little gesso there to blend with. You can use white paint if you want. very light coloring and I don't try to mix it too much I, I like getting different skin tones and colors I don't want it to be perfectly flat one tone all of it And as you can see, I'm not being overly careful. If I go over the clothing, I'm not worried because I am going to be cutting that out from, from there. 
So I'm going to finish this and cut them out and I'll be back. When I'm cutting, I tend to leave on the dress part. I leave, I go on the outside of the black line. So the black line stays on here. When I cut this girl, I will cut it right on the black line. So the clothing goes past where the doll is. And that way you don't end up, you know, with, with space that, that isn't going to be co colored. I may also um, sometimes because I prefer cutting it with this, I just get an exacto knife and I cut it with with the blade here and I just do it like this and you're cutting off you, you know the the limbs you don't want the arms you're cutting right to where the clothing is on this one I find, sometimes find that this is easier for me to cut especially when you're dealing with very thin areas like this strap of the dress. It's very fine cutting. So I just prefer using it, using the X-Acto knife here. This one doesn't have any bandana, so I don't need to worry about trying to rescue it. But if I wanted, I could just cut my own shape out of here. sure if I'm going to give her color coordinated boots or what but now if I'm going to cut these out I'm going to especially in here this is where I typically always use the exacto knife so even if I'm using scissors for everything else this part I don't think there's any there. It's just a piddly little job. It, it really is. So, and I could, you know, I may color the hair. Sometimes I leave the color of the hair till I have the background. Or sometimes I guess, and if I'm doing it in bulk, I might do one blonde, one brunette, one redhead. So I have a variety at the ready. But um, And I'll just save the crown for painting later.
Yep, that's. Oops, this is gonna. Kind of make this one kind of a dirtyish blonde color. Oh, well, everyone's just that little bit. So hopefully you have an appreciation for all the steps to this and why doing it kind of in of itself as an activity in of itself is, is kind of helpful. So once you have the dress, now remember you've cut the dress on the outside of the black line and the and then the doll, I try to cut off the black line a little bit. You can always trim it later without any difficulty but and that I'm just going to use, I've always used just gel medium and I just put that on and you just line up the dress Oops. just didn't clip off something here, there we go I just try to line it up as best I can. If there's a little overlap, I just trim it here. Not, you know, I'm not too finicky about about that. Put a coat of gel medium. Now I could paint these, or I, in this case, I'm just going to use the same. They're going to be designer. They're going to match. The advantage of waiting to paint till after the dresses are on, then you can, if you're painting the hair or anything, you can kind of make sure that it all goes together. So I've done that. So the order of which you paint the doll is completely up to you. And then just set that aside to dry. Now, one of the things that I do with some of the dresses, especially if I'm making two of them, two of the same dolls, what I would do, because this has kind of a frill, as does this one, right? You can see it's a like two-piece outfit. So what I do sometimes is I just cut them apart. So I have two kind of outfits that work together, and then I kind of mix and match. So there we have, we're going to put that one on, and this is going to be the skirt of this one, and then we're going to do the same. Now if I'm trying to use both of them, you know, it may not be exact, and sometimes you have to go in with a little bit of Inktense block to color what should be a color, but that's easy enough to do. So there, and then we have this. 
Otherwise, I could have just left it and just glued it on top. So now we have kind of a, a mixed and matched outfit. So I'm going to put the skirt on first, and again, it, it's... There we go. And I haven't colored that hair yet, so I'm not going to put on the bandana. Cut off any excess paper. Here we have bandana goes in. It's dark hair, so I'm going to use the lighter one. I'm going to put that on there. This one I'm going to give her yellow-brown hair. So it really doesn't matter where, what order you paint them in. We have the outfits and can coordinate the shoes. And a little gesso. That's a little too dark. A lot of times, by the time I put them on the cards, the feet are end up cutting, getting cut off. So I tend to not worry so much about them. So that's done. You could also cut them out if you wanted to, but that's just a little too finicky for me. And hmm, I had another bandana here, and I may have just lost it. Twins. So, so 
So another finishing, um, this I have. Now I could cut this piece out of another color, uh, purple or gold if I wanted to, but what I'm going to do is use the um, fluid acrylic here in Prussian blue, and I'm going to just kind of shade shade it. And I'll, you know, often I do this, you know, when I've got it on the page. But I just wanted to show that now so that you could, you know, kind of see different ways of finishing it up, right? It's kind of doing a little bit of a wash over her, her dress and I'm going to make her just going to use this since I've got it out just to color her And you don't you don't have to be doing using fluid acrylics to to get this effect. You can be using your regular acrylic paints. I just happen to have my Prussian blue right out handy here, so that's what I grabbed. In there. And then I'm just going to paint her crown will be painted gold. So I see the battery is flashing for me to be done. You know, I could go in with a little bit of Prussian blue here just to add a little more color if I wanted to. You know, sky's the limit. There we have that, and that one, and this one. I hope you find this useful. Um, tag me if you create with your Julie Nutting dolls using some of the techniques that I have here, and look forward to um, seeing where these end up on a certain page. Bye for now.